welcome. Uh, my name is Yvonne Allen. I work for currently work for NCR as a full stack developer, um, and I'm part of Women Who Code. So that's a little bit about me. Yeah. So all my Women Who Code is up in here. What's up? <laughs> Thank you for um, coming to my talk. So um, basically, I'm just going to be talking to you about schematics. I don't know why that was doing that, um, but yeah. So schematics in the context of Angular, but just to let you know, you don't have to use Angular in order to use schematics. I'm just showing you how to use um, schematics in the Angular context. So you're probably wondering, like, you know, uh, what, what is this schematic thing all about? You know, you probably think if you've used any, if you use Angular before, you're probably thinking like this is a completely new concept, but it's not. Uh, you've actually already used Angular before using the Angular CLI, so most people don't don't even know that. But you know, like you're probably wondering, like, what is schematics? So schematics is basically a workflow tool that allow you to generate files and transform them. Um, a, a good example of that would be using ng new to create a new component, or using ng add to add extra functionality like dashboards or adding Ionic to your project. So those, those are two good examples of using the Angular uh, schematic CLI as, as is. Now, in order to use schematics in our, in our example, we're going to be creating an Angular project, and we're going to be creating a schematics project. And in order to create an Angular project, you do these simple steps, which is basically do npm install to install the Angular CLI, and then you do ng-new and give your project a name. Uh, in our case, I'm calling it demo. And then you go directly into the project you just created by navigating into it using CD, uh, and then your project name, and then you do ng-serve to start the, the Angular server. Which is, uh, if you use Angular, you already know this, but if you have not, this is like a, a intro to how to create an Angular, an Angular uh, project using the Angular CLI. Now, in order to create a schematics project, you use the schematic CLI, which are kind of the same thing, but not really. So schematics, the schematic CLI is more generalized, and the Angular CLI is actually Angular agnostic. I'm saying Angular based. So the schematic CLI is Angular agnostic. Now, in order to do that, only thing you have to do is first make sure you have no install of 6.9 or higher, and do npm install, and then the schematics package name, which is um, Angular dash dev kit slash schematics dash CLI. And then what you do is create a blank schematics project. And the way you would do that is use schematics blank dash dash name equals whatever your project is, um, whatever you're calling your project. In our case, I'm going to be calling it Gotham, Goth Man City. So, and then after that, um, you would navigate into the Angular, the schematics project, and then you would do npm install to install all your dependencies. And then you're done. That's it. Like, you thought there would be more, but there's not because schematics and Angular is so cool. You know what I'm saying? You get everything super easy, simple, nothing much. Uh, the dependencies are start already for you using the npm, so you don't have to go find all these libraries and like try to um, worry about compatibility with versions. None of that. It's just, that's it. Now, um, sorry, I don't, I don't need that one. No. That's it, copy. So um, I'm going to leave that right, right quick. But uh, so next thing I want to do is kind of we're going to dive into the schematics projects, I just, the two, the schematics projects and the Angular project I just told you about in order to show you the, the project structure of what a schematics project look like and use that in order to first um, take creating a component and creating a service and combine them together and show you how to use the schematics the schematics you allow to do that in order to reduce the amount of steps you have to do for our project. And let me show you this game. So the way that I'm doing this is showing using a game. So um, I figure you know it's it's nice to do some coding and, and all that, but to help you relate to it, we're going to use a game in order to use schematics in order to scaffold out um, our to our villain and our our super villain and our superhero and have them battle it out. But we're going to use schematics to do that. So let's dive into that. So 
here at face value. Okay. Whoa. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know anything about what it does. That. Anyway, so here is our, our game. So our game is placed in Gotham City, not Gotham City, because we have an alternate reality, the angular Gotham City reality. And we are we have a, um, a super villain called Bane. So it's kind of a spinoff of the um, Dark Knight Rises movie. Have anybody ever seen that one? Okay. For those of you who doesn't, there is a villain, and his name is Bane. So that's why we created a super super villain called Bane. But right now, our our project doesn't do anything. You know, you have a, a super a super villain, and you know, it's, it's a vision. You know, that's just a dot. But let's envision. You know, he has like a, a gun and a knife, and he's out to you know do bad things. But um, I, I'm not a graphic designer, so I can't do all that. But um, you know, right now. He's out to do bad things. And now we've got to create a superhero in order to battle him and defeat him. And we're going to do that using Angular schematics. So let's dive into what that looks like. So um, here we are. We have a basic structure of a, um, of a schematics project. So first, let's just assume that we did uh, the, the basic command to install and to create a new um, schematics project, which is schematics blank dash dash name, and we did Gothman City. And then we went ahead and did npm install to install our dependencies. For the sake of time, let's just assume that that's what we did. And now you have our, our project structure. So right now, the first schematic you'll see, so you have the name of the, pro the, the, the project or package, if you're in, in the NPM world, is called Gothman City. And then you have our first schematic. So the schematic is in its own folder, and it's also by default called Goth, um, Gothman City. So let's go, let's, let me show you how, that's, how that works. So first, you, the one important thing you want to, I want you to see is if you go into package.json, you have this dependency, um, this property called schematics right here. So this, this property is, is really important because it's the base for everything else that happens in your Angular project. I'm saying in your schematics projects. And so let's go, and, and it's called collections.json. So let's go to the collections.json file and show you what that looks like. So inside of collections.json, which is where your package.json points to, you will see um, your, your schematic. So when you're looking at this, you're, you're seeing collections.json. You're like, what is, what is a collection? Like, how does that, what is that, what value does it have to me? What does that word really mean? So a collection in schematics is a, it's basically a list of schematics. So that's all that really is. And so when you see here, that property called schematics is listing your first um, schematic of your project. And by default, when you do schematics blank, um, that, that command, what you're doing is it, it also what it does is scuffles out a angular schematic, I'm saying a schematic for you, and give it the same name of that project. Now, it does not have to stay that way. You can delete that one. It doesn't matter. But just to get you up and running, it automatically does that for you. So you can see how to uh, format the rest of your schematics as you go along throughout your project. So the, the first thing you see there is that pro, uh, property dollar, dollar sign schema that basically you get that by default is basically the, sch the schema you're going to be using to validate your JSON um, properties and files that you're going to properties that you're going to be using in this, um, in, this, in this file. And then the next thing you have right there, uh, the most important thing right there is this goth man city. So when you're doing this and when you're creating a schematic, you, there are some rules. You cannot use uppercase letters. You cannot use spaces. You have to use dashes. So this is why I use Gothman dash city to create the, the, um, the schematic name. And then the next thing, <coughs> excuse me. Then the next thing is the description. 
So description is basically what you, how you're going to describe what the schematic is. So if someone just comes into your collections.json file and want to see, um, excuse me, a list of all of your schematics, they can go here, excuse me, and then see, get it like a brief description of what all, what's all in your, in, in what all schematics you have and kind of what they do. And then the next thing is a factory. So the factory is where all your rules are. And right here you see, um, um, schematics name and then and then index and the index is basically where all of your your rules are going to be for your schematic and then Gothman City which is just going to be the name of the first uh, rule that's going to hit in your in your rule factory so let's go there to the index.ts file because that's the next important file so in your in your index.ts file you're seeing that exact same name Gothman City, which is your first rule. So what is what is a rule? So a rule is something <clears throat> is something that does a bunch of transforms to your tree and then spits out another tree. Now he's like, okay, tell me what a rule is. That was confusing. I kind of get that. Now what's a tree, right? You know, this is another new term. I don't know any of these terms. They're not really very familiar to me. So a tree is something that is a structure that holds your file system in your changing area. So if you can think of a changing area, like if you're using Git, right? So you have um, your, your, your initial file structure, your project structure before any changes happened, and then you have all the, um, the, working, the working tree, which is the list of all your changes that happened um, be right before you started making any changes. So that's what a tree is. It holds that structure so that you can make changes and you know go e either revert back if something happens to your initial file structure before all those changes happen. So you have both of those in in, in that tree object. So um, now that you, you see that, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the um, the add component. So. But, but before we go there, I just want to show you, just give you an example of what we're about to do in this schematic by using the Angular, the Angular CLI. Because right, right now what we're going to do is create a new component. But before we dive into it in, the, in this more convoluted way, I want to show you just as simply how, what we're about to do. So if we, if we navigate over to our demo, Awesome. We're gonna just simply create just a simple a simple component. So the way you do that in Angular is you would say ng generate and then you say C, right? Because C in, in Angular world that's just a short way for saying component because you sometimes you just don't want to, you know, it's just an alias. And then we're gonna give it a name. Ivy. So there's another villain character called Ivy. And we're going to let Angular spin that up. Sometimes it takes a moment when you first start in, in the project. Awesome. So there you go. There you have it. That's exactly what we're about to do. So what just happened here, for people who don't, don't really know what, what just happened, um, Angular created a component file that has um, an HTML, HTML file, which is where you use all your UI components, and then a CSS file for that exact same component, and then you create a TS file, which is where all your, your logic is going to happen. Okay? And then, um, and then it updated the app.module file to add that new component um, to, to that. Uh, before I before I continue, has any does anybody else use like Angular or any other front end framework like React or anything like that? Okay, so just to, just to, just to see where my audience is to make sure you know I'm not just completely losing y'all. If I'm losing you, just say you lost me, okay? And I'll be like, all right, I'm a backtrack if we have time. So schematics will. And so that's why I try to differentiate to you the difference between um, the Angular CLI and schematics. So this is that, that command ng new, that's, that's the, the Angular CLI. And then the next one I'm going to do is show you how to do it using the schematic CLI so you can be in any project. Okay. So um, heading back to that. So we're going to do this exact same, same thing, 
but we're going to use the schematic CLI to do it now. And so let's hop back over to our schematics projects, and I'll show you how we're going to show you how we do that. OK, so back in our schematics project now, uh, you will see here that we are using, I'm saying we're doing add component. So basically, add component, we're going to go straight up, go right above that to the where it says add component. You see we use, the, uh, use a method called chain. So chain in schematics is a rule, just like how we have our first rule here at Gotham City, that will allow you to uh, chain different actions in order to compound them on top of each other uh, to do one particular thing. So in our case, we're going to create a component, then we're going to create a service in order to have action. So like when um, I click on the, the superhero, it's going to attack the, the supervillain, but that's going to be done in the service. So we have to compound those two actions together using a chain. But right now, since we're, I'm just showing you how we do that exact same thing we did in Angular CLI inside of schematics, um, we're going to just, we, we have just one, one method, but we're going to, sorry, just one action, but we're going to compound on that. So let's, let's go, let, now that I showed you this and how that works, um, hold on, one second before that, there's something more important that I need to show you. So <clears throat> in order to do that, we have a, 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 another, another um, method called external, external schematics. So external schematics allows you to import other schematics into your project. So right now you have a project that you're just you're um, creating custom, but there's also already um, other schematics out there, schematics packages that does some functionalities and things that you can import into your project. So you don't have to create re recreate the wheel. So if you found a schematics project out there on npm and, or in on GitLab that does something that you already need to do, you don't have to do that again. Just pull their project, their their schematic in and use that first, and then you can build on that. So that's what external schematics, that's what that is for. Now, what we're saying is schematics Angular. So that's the, that is Angular's package. And what you're saying, I want to use the component schematic in order to, um, inside, of my, inside of my schematic, my rule that I'm doing right now. And, that, and then you're giving it options. So the options, we're going to talk a little bit more about that later. But options come from the command line. So when I did dash dash name, when I created my first schematic, that was the um, that was an option from the command line that is read into your schematic, and you can do stuff with it. So that's what that's for. So what we're going to do is take that same thing, and we're going to use that in our Angular in our um, in our Angular project in order to create a component as well. But right as it stands, it seems like we're just kind of recreating the wheel, but we're not. We're, we're going to compound on top of that. So let's do that. So after you do, um, we're assuming that I, 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 I created that code just now. First of all, the first thing you have to do, once you make it, any time you make a change to your Angular project, your, I'm sorry, your schematics project, you're going to have to say npm run build. So using that command there, it will build your project and test and make sure you, you don't have any errors. And then it will you can, you can it will then recompile to the um, node modules your global node modules folder. So let's just do that. Boom. So I didn't get any errors. So if you got any errors, it will come up. Do you know if you ever seen like the errors in the command line? It'll say error, then it gives you an error. But since since you if you don't get any errors, it look just like that. Now, the next thing you do is you do um, npm link. So what that does, this is when, this is you only have to do this on the on the start of when you create your Angular your schematics project and your Angular project or any other project in order to uh, create a link for this um, for your Angular schematics project. So when you do npm link, what happens is it is with npm it'll put it in the node the global node modules packages and it'll add that there. So then anytime in your schematics project you can just pull it down from there uh, and link it. So that way you can talk for talk to your projects without having to do npm install every time you make a change, which is can if you if you have a lot of dependencies that you need to worry about, it, it can be you know time very time consuming. So you would create that link. I've already done that, so I'm not going to redo it again. But I just wanted to show you that you have to do that. It's very important. So now that we did that, where's my mouse? Let's go back. 
to our demo. Okay, so now that we're here, the way that you connect these two together is you do npm link, and then the name of your schematics project, which is Goth Men City, just like that. Okay, so um, that right there now creates a link between your schematics project and your Angular project on your dev in your dev environment so that you don't have to do npm installs all the time. So it's very important that you do that because if you do not do that, your Angular project will not, or any other project, will not know about your schematics project, and it will not update properly, and it will fail. So now that we did that, let's use our schematics in, in order to uh, add a new component using the schematic CLI and not the, um, the schematics project. So you go ng, you, so you're, because we're still in the, um, the, the Angular context, you still use ng, generate. But this time, now instead of using the Angular schematics, you're going to use a schematic from your schematics project. And that's goth, men, and then you do this colon, so that's the name of the package, and then you're going to say the name of the schematic. And sorry, I forgot city. And then you're going to do goth, men, city. Because we named it the same thing. Let's make sure I, nope, I spelled city wrong. Just like that. And then we're going to say dash dash name. And we're going to say um, equals. And we're going to do, I don't know, what's another villain character? Huh? Huh? Riddler. Is that how you spell that? I don't know. It's going to cause that. <laughs> it's close enough. Awesome. So now you see that just happened. So we use the Angular, I'm saying the schematic CLI this time to create that component and not the Angular CLI to do that. But it's like, okay, that's cool. I mean, you kind of just, it feels redundant right now, but you know, it's, it has a greater purpose. So this is just showing you how to do that, but with the schematic CLI instead. So if you're in another project, you can use it that way. So let's go back. And now I want you, I want to create a service and um, create a service and a component at the same time in order to now get, create a character that would allow us to attack our supervillain, which is like the whole purpose of this whole talk to to attack our supervillain. So let's let's go back to that. Oh, sorry, we're already in there. Okay, so let me put my mouse back over here. Okay, so let's, before, but in order to do that, um, let me talk to you a little bit about the schema. So in order to, for, for us to use our service, so we're going to use the Angular CLI again, the Angular schematics again in order to use the service. And this, now I'm showing you how to compound them both on top of each other. But in order to do that, we, first thing we need is the schema.json and a schema.ts, the schema.ts. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. So, in your schema.ts, I'm sorry, schema.json, you have a list of your command line properties that are allowed for your schema. So you can use any, but um, any does not allow for validation. And you want to be able to validate. And if a, if a user is trying to use a, a, a option on your command line that you don't offer, you need to be able to validate against that. So that's what the that's where schema.json and schema.ts come in at. Now, what you see, let's, let's break this, th this down right quick. So again, you have the schema property like we discussed before. We're going to validate all of our properties using, using that schema. But then you have ID. So ID is what you're going to be able to call your options. Like you're going to identify your options by an ID. And right here, I just called it Gotham City Options Schema. And then you have a title, which is usually I just space the same name. And then you give it a type. And this, we're going to give it a type of object to saying that it's a list of objects. Um, then you have properties. So the best, the most important part is properties. So properties to, is basically the commands, the, the options that you're going to have. Now, if you're using an external schema, you have to import all of those options first into your schema that you're going to use in order to use that schema. 
If you do not, it will fail. So that's very important that you add all of the properties, I'm saying, yeah, all of the properties from the schema that you're gonna be using into that schema that you're, you're, you're creating on your own. And the reason, but you don't have to. So if you're not using the external schema, you don't have to do that. So that's why I didn't, um, I didn't have it at first. But now we're using um, a schema that is from an external, sorry, from an external schematic. So then now we have it. And so let's go down and you see all the properties that I have here. And most of these are from the, the Angular component schematic, and that's why we have them. And then I'm going to say that the a name is required. And the next thing I did was um, we're going to use an interface. So interface allows for validation. And basically the same thing, all the properties that you have in your schema.json, you put exact, you put them, you port them over to your schema.ts, and that way you're going to be using TypeScripts. Um, interfaces in order to for validation and type checking. So basically, this is just going to be a list of every all the properties that was in JSON.ts. Say schema.json. So now let's go back to our index.ts. So in our index.ts, you will now see that we had you added schema, and then we had Gotham. I'm say as Gotham options. So you just we're going to call them Gotham because you. Uh, in bigger schematics projects, you, you wind up having a whole bunch of schemas, 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 and you don't know like, like what that is. So we just named it uh, Gotham, Gotham Options, so you know, okay, we're talking about the command line options for our Gotham, Gotham City schematic and not any other one, okay? So now you see, now we, we um, added those as options and put those in there, and now, Now we add the service. So the reason why I showed you one before the other was because it gets quite advanced when I add the, the service in here. And if you're once you get deeper and deeper in schematics, you'll have to you you wind up adding more methods and and doing more stuff with it. So here we created a another another list of options for our service because we're these are not the same as the ones that are in um, in the component ones. Well, not sorry, like one or two are different. And then we have another method called um, called add service. So this is going to be able to add a service to our Angular. Um, sorry, this is going to be able to add a service to our schematic schematics projects, as you can see. So using the exact same method we use to create a component. So now let's see what that looks like. Okay. Oh, one other thing before, sorry, I forgot to mention this. Here we added one extra command. So the first time we just used name, um, name equals, and then we gave gave our new, uh, um, gave our villain name, which was um, Riddler. But this time um, we added a service option. So this com service command options will now allow me to create a component in a service at the same time with one command. And what you see here, you will see um, it'll be a type of string, and then you have an alias option. So you don't have to add alias option, but I, I like to create alias for all the options that I have to just kind of make it short and, and sweet. And so the alias is sn. And that's the only other change that we had. So let's go do that. All right, so back to our demo. Let's go back to the base, to the base branch. No, okay. Oh yeah, let's just. Show. 
Uh oh, put that thing again. You stupid. Um. All right. So. Let's use our schematic to create a service and a component. And this time we're going to um, create a superhero. Let's, 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 call, let's, let's do Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman's kind of cool. Give it a name. And, then, uh, and the service is people. So there you have it. We created a component, called her Wonder Woman, and then we created a, a, um, a service called Attack. So see right there, instead of doing them separately using two different commands, we use one command to do so. So that is the basic power of, of using Angular's, um, sorry, of using schematics in general. Now, when you get in deeper into it, you can do more things like use it to um, update for breaking changes. You can also use it for um, adding different libraries and automatically doing the updates to the files that is required to do to, for that. And so you can scoffle that part out. But, excuse me, for our example, because there's already a lot going on, we're just, we're just using that one. So the next thing I want to show you is, um, the next thing we have to do is add the, um, the ability to attack our, our, take our super, superhero and attack our supervillain. So let's, Let's, let's add some stuff for that to, to see how that works. I'm going to say to just finish out our game. If you run, where is my mouse? Yes, sir. <coughs> Does it have that in there? Okay. And just say this. This is going to do it anyway. Okay. Okay, so um, now the only thing we did was we, we let's assume that I didn't create Wonder Woman because um, I created Birdman instead because um, I used Wonder Woman because it was, I had already created Birdman. But let's assume that we did Birdman and then we, we added this service. We added this, this um, private service, um, fight service, Fight service. So instead of doing attack, we did we did fight service. So we did that, and then um, if you use Angular, you just know you just have to create a method, and then um, this dot fight service dot attack. So that is our attack method from in our, in our um, that we just added to our component from our service. So basically, all of, all all our um, one thing our our service our fight service is going to do is it's going to every time you click on the superhero, it's going to delete the health of the supervillain by ten, and then once um, the health is at zero, it's going to label the superhero as the as the winner. So let's 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 play around with that, see how that works in our game. So let's just start the the Angular server. Oh, 
like it. It's already, it's already there. I forgot it. Okay, so now, as you see, in the beginning of our game, we, we only had we only had one character, which is our supervillain. Now we have our, our our superhero, which we call Birdman, instead of, you know, playoff Batman. It's called Birdman. All right, we're going to attack him. Boom, we hit him one time. I have bad graphics. Sorry, nothing happened. And no animations. Boom, hit him again. And then you win. So that's just a little, a little game we did in order to show you how to create schematics. Um, we have a few more minutes, so you know if you have any questions, this will be a good time. You know, just if you have anything you want to know, anything about me, or just um, using Angular at all, if you are like front end or anything like that. Yes. So the value of other um, so you don't have to use other frameworks. I, I just showed you an example using other frameworks to just kind of uh, make it a little bit more simple to show you how you can use uh, schematics in this form of Angular in order to just compound some of the things you have to do in Angular that make require multiple tasks, um, multiple commands to do so. We just tied it into one command and did it all at once. But you can the value in it is that you can make updates to your files without with one command like adding um, excuse me adding more information into your into your files that already exist and scoff for those out if you have like some boilerplate code that you have to always add and you kind of get tired of adding it you can use schematics in order to do that as well so that's that's one of the main things you can do with schematics any other questions yes how much are you using uh, well, our team is is an Angular house, so we use it every day. But there's other teams that use other frameworks. But our house, um, our department uses uses Angular. Um, ours is Digital Insight, so we're using um, Angular Digital Insight for the B2B side. Uh, in your examples, you're using the MD command to use the schematics. Um, did you have like your own internal um, so, you know, your own framework, how does that look like to integrate schematics into your own framework? Uh, so then schematics will be the CLI. So if you have a framework that doesn't have a CLI, schematics is your, going to be your, uh, your CLI. And you, instead of calling it, let's say your project was um, like a health app, so like diabetic me or whatever, you probably want to create a schematic and call it like the project name is Diabetic CLI, Diabetic Me CLI, instead of Gotham in City CLI, um, so that you'd be like um, schematics, um, Diabetic Me, and then you whatever your your schematics name is, and then the, the the options that way. So that's like if you don't have it already, but if you have it, like Angular has a, a CLI already, you're just using um, adding more functionality to the Angular CLI by using schematics on top of that. Anything else? Nope. OK. Well, thank you for joining my talk. And um, I hope you guys have a wonderful day.